Now we come to another highlight in our program. Every year, the regional president of Phi Theta Kappa, the two-year college honor society, addresses our annual convention. Um, it's always been encouraging to hear from these young leaders and share in their enthusiasm. If you would, please help me to welcome this year's Phi Theta Kappa president, Jonas Arellano of Grayson College. I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this evening. It is not only an honor, but a blessing, as this opportunity has forced me to reflect my journey as a community college student. You see, as kids, many of us were told what to do, how to do it, and what was expected of us. Each moment of our days was scripted, pre-planned, and quite frankly, overscheduled. Each mom, uh, we grew up with the idea that others had to make decisions for us and somehow forgot we are capable of forging our own path. For many students, stepping onto a co college campus provides the first opportunity to think outside the lines, question what we've been taught, and make decisions for ourselves. Along the way, some of us stumble and get stuck in limbo trying to find our way back to the path that leads us to a positive direction. Author Stephen Covey, encourages his readers, readers to begin with an end in mind, to have a clearly defined goal and then forge a path to accomplish it. This requires vision. But how can one have vision without knowing the opportunities that exist? We must be capable of seeing past the horizon. And for this, it takes time. For some of us, a lot of time and a lot of mistakes along the way too. And most of the time, we don't see beyond the horizon without the help like those of you in the audience tonight. As children, we follow blindly. We have trust in our elders and faith they'll lead us down a safe path. Not too long ago, I baked some brownies for a fundraiser at school. Now, let me be honest, I have no skills in the kitchen. I challenged myself to do it because I had made a commitment and there was no turning back. I followed the directions on that box closely. Oil, eggs, mix. But one thing stood out. It said, add eight tablespoons of butter. Yes, it really said eight tablespoons. <laughs> My first instinct was, that can't be right. Eight tablespoons is a lot. <laughs> but I blindly followed the direction. I added the butter and mixed it with the other ingredients. It looked weird, and I knew I messed it up, but I had hope the recipe was right. Stuck it in the oven and waited 30 minutes as instructed. When the buzzer went off, the moment of truth was upon me. Would the brownies be a complete disaster, or would my blind faith pay off? When I took them out of the oven, the batter was half raw and half burned. <laughs> you think I'm kidding, but I'm not. Like the edges were burned and the middle was still raw. While preparing the batter, my first instinct was to question the recipe. But being a novice in the kitchen, I followed the directions. Now I may or may not have misread the directions. <laughs> Or maybe it was a mistake on that box. <laughs> but what I do realize now is that we can't follow so blindly. We have to stop and think about it. We have to make sure that what we are following is what we truly want. Or in my case, what we hope we want. We have to make sure we, we have the right ingredients, drive, goals, and mix of struggles and stumbles along the way. To know who we are as individuals, we must first overcome our most difficult experiences. We each suffer some way or another. Some of us have greater struggles than others. But it is how we overcome those obstacles that really define us. I had to go through these struggles and realize now that the challenges I face develop me into the man who stands before you now. 
One of the most difficult, difficult obstacles I overcame was accepting who I was, who I am. As an immigrant child, I did not have a sense of where I belonged. This was something with which I struggled all my life. What was even more difficult was trying to get out of the shadows of being labeled an immigrant. I was left asking, where do I truly belong? Was I not American enough? Was I not Mexican enough? Though I look Mexican, I grew up as American as my childhood friends. Despite growing up American, I was not a legal citizen. I had to keep that part of my identity a secret. Hearing the word immigrant as a word to dehumanize someone made it even more difficult. Immigrants were viewed as leeches, the leftovers of other countries, the poorest, the least talented, with no worth to society. I listened to all of this and I tried to process it. I could not comprehend why there was so much hatred for us. I began to internalize what I was hearing and started believing it too. It came to a point where I was embarrassed and ashamed of who I was. The color of my skin became a constant reminder that I was nothing. I do not blame my parents for all I was going through. I am thankful that they wanted the best with their kids. My mother wanted to be a nurse, and my father was a musician. They gave up their dreams to give me mine. And like most kids, I wanted to make them proud. But as an immigrant child, their sacrifice made that even more important. At my high school graduation, I remember this feeling that this was it for me. I had to smile as I saw each of my classmates go on stage and follow the path leading to the next step of their lives, as the majority was moving forward. I kept thinking to myself, Jonas, this can't be it, man. You have to give it a try. As I walked across the stage and accepted my diploma, I realized that I wanted more. Going to college was something I was going to do no matter what it took. That fall, I dragged myself to a local community college and enrolled. During my first semester, I felt confident that my future would be bright, but I didn't know yet what career to choose. Either way, I wanted to prove to myself that I was intelligent, I had dreams, and I could make them come true. I would not, I would not be one of the poorest in the community viewed as talentless without worth to society. I would emerge from the shadows. This was a fresh start, and I was determined to apply myself. I had troubles during that semester. I made little connections to my peers and wasn't engaged in the campus community. Towards the, end of my, towards the end of that semester, I didn't do as well as I expected. I could not financially afford another semester. At that point, I let doubt question my resolve. Maybe this was it for me. Who was I kidding, right? I had not only proven my doubts true, but I gave them power over me. I spent the next four years trying to figure out a way to live, survive, and become an adult. One day on Facebook, I remember seeing my old friends graduating from college. I felt happy for them. All of a sudden, a wave, a wave of emotions overtook me. There was a voice inside my head that kept telling me, you're not living up to your potential. Don't you just hate that voice? It's a gnawing one, to say the least. I hated that voice so much, but in all honesty, I hated myself. I knew it was true, yet had done nothing about it. I felt like a complete failure. Then it hit me. I wouldn't be able to provide for my family with a low-income job. I gave up on college before I had even gotten halfway through the first year. By this time, I was married, left without a purpose. I was exactly what I was afraid I'd always become, the poor, talentless, worthless immigrant. I was lost. At least until I was gifted with a precious baby girl, my daughter Ellie, who gave me purpose and drive. I look back at my childhood 
and I did not want to be the parent who didn't have the answers to his kid's homework, the parent who did not find time to play or was unable to give her everything she needed. I knew I had to be her role model. She deserved it. She became the reason for my drive to succeed just as much as I wanted to breathe. I know everyone has a motivation that drives them. Ellie was mine. I wanted the best for my daughter and that required doing the best for me. I am forging a path for my daughter to follow. I want to show her that no matter what barriers she may face in life that impede her from achieving her goals, that there's always a way to overcome them. Sometimes you have to lose to understand the value of that life experience and therefore attain the tools and perseverance to win the next time. I realize that when I am down in the hardest of times, I can either stay down or get up and try once more. These decisions became building blocks to my path for success. In 2015, I made up my mind, and with the insistence of my wife's family, I decided I wanted to be a dentist. After doing some research, I knew what was required to get into a dental program. I looked into the Texas A&M and Baylor School of Dentistry in Dallas, saw their requirements, and developed a path to get there. Finally, beginning with an end in mind and having the drive to accomplish it, I was beginning to break down walls. In 2015, I moved my family to Sherman to start a new life and enrolled at Grayson College, this time prepared and committed. Grayson College is where my life changed completely. During my very first semester, I had a federal government class with the most passionate professor. To be completely honest, politics and governments were the subject, subjects I would never touch. I hated them. Professor Mary Linder, who is in the audience tonight, became my mentor and my friend. She gave me one of the best college experiences I've had. She helped me turn my life around. Professor Linder recognized that I had a lot of potential, something I, I couldn't see in myself. More importantly, she encouraged me to never let an opportunity pass me by. She encouraged me to take leadership roles as soon as I joined Phi Theta Kappa. I first became the chapter officer, and the following semester I took a huge leap forward. With my chapter's full support, we successfully campaigned for the position of the Texas Regional President. The chapter then nominated me to represent them. They had faith that I was able to fulfill this duty. They believed in me. I, Jonas Arellano, immigrant child, became the regional president of arguably the best region in the largest honor society in the nation, Phi Theta Kappa. <laughs> Through Phi Theta Kappa, I learned to develop my leadership abilities as I lead with five other community college students from across Texas who have become my dearest friends. I have met many individuals through my work with the society. I have gained tremendous experience planning and running conferences of up to 600 people by staying focused on our end goal. One of our, go one of our goals was for each conference was to challenge the perspectives of each attendee by exposing them to new ideas, encouraging them to think outside the box and question why they believe what they do. We created environments for them to engage in academic dialogue where they not only, not only share their own beliefs, but listen to diverse perspectives as well. We dare to address subjects such as refugees, immigration, and global warming. The most amazing experience is seeing conference attendees openly discuss their views, and although they do not agree on issues, they voice their opinions and learn about the perspectives of others. We we, we learn to engage in often heated dialogue while maintaining mutual respect, something we weren't seeing in our current world, world through, the, through the political process or media. It is amazing to know how diverse we are. Each of us have a different background, yet we are walking the same path. As I began 
to build relationships with these individuals, I began to realize that we're not so different after all. Sure, we have different physical appearances, religious beliefs, and passions, but at the root of it all, we're all just college students trying to navigate the maze of course selection, transferability of courses, quizzes, homework, and all of that studying. We're all human. Understanding this is how we break down walls that too often divide us. I realized that I was not the only one struggling to find my way. And some people had a more challenging path than mine. Seeing how each and every one of them overcame their life struggles is empowering. I learned a lot from these bright individuals and their support allowed me to face many of my fears. Ironically, one of my biggest fears is public speaking. <laughs> it was terrifying at first, but knowing I have a whole region of students and advisors who support me is beyond amazing. And look at me here tonight. I couldn't have done this a year ago. I accomplished many things that seemed impossible to me growing up. As I mentioned, I felt like I lived in the shadows, where everyone but me was moving forward. I no longer feel that way. I've gained confidence in myself, and it took one professor who believed in me to significantly change my path. I am blessed to forge this path with the support of my friends walking beside me. I imagine each of you as educators chose this path you're currently on because you knew you could make a difference. It's often said that teaching is one of the most noble professions. I mean, no, go, no one goes into education for the money. <laughs> Educators teach and support students, and those students then make an impact in the world, just as their, their educators made an impact in their students' lives. You have the power to change lives. Do you hear that? The work you do both in and out of your classrooms is important, so when you feel like you may not be getting through to your students, remember this. You are making a difference, and we notice it. By inspiring and encouraging your students, by forcing them to question their beliefs, challenging them to try harder and leading them by sharing your own struggles, you are guides who help students follow the academic path. Because of the impact of one professor, I am now ready to graduate this spring I will transfer to the University of Texas in Arlington, and I'm on my path to citizenship. With the experiences I have gained, I shifted my career to aerospace engineering. I tried following the recipe for my career, and I found that what moment? You know, when you realize eight tablespoons is a lot. <laughs> Only this time, I questioned the recipe and made my own decisions. All the mistakes, barriers, and successes have made, have made me who I am now. We cannot follow recipes, the voices of our parents, or the expectations of the world blindly. It's a community of teachers, administrators, and students. We each have the right ingredients to help others discover their true vision. We can help them forge new paths while breaking down the walls. Remember that it takes all of us working together to make a difference. You are, import, you are an important ingredient in the recipe. And on behalf of all community college students in the state of Texas, we thank you. Thank you, Jonas, for your moving remarks. The light shines brightly on you. <laughs>